second title, You Don't Get a Second Chance at Life and has been mentored by Toastmaster Shorya Roy. Can you please hear it loud for Toastmaster Rohan Mitra? Yeah. This is a story from around 20 years ago about an ordinary man named Kevin Hines. Kevin was a 19 year old at the time. He was a university student. He had a loving family and he had a head full of dreams and he wanted to make it big in life. Not too much unlike me and you, don't you think? But there was something that was very different. There was something that was holding Kevin back. He had a lot of demons. He was suffering from crippling depression. One fine morning in a sunny California day, Kevin decided that he was going to end his life. He woke up and he joined his family for breakfast. His mom had cooked him pancakes. Kevin had always hated pancakes. His dad decided to give him a drop that day to college. While stepping out of the car, his dad just called him back. And he said, son, we want you to come back early to home today because we want to have a family dinner. Kevin looked back at his dad in a very reassuring manner and said to him, don't worry dad, I'll be back home in time and we'll have a family dinner just as you said. That was the first time Kevin lied to his father. He had no intentions to come back home. He skipped class and he took a bus to the iconic San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. His intentions was not to soak up the sights, but to rather jump off the structure. On his ride at the bus, Kevin was weeping incessantly. In fact, he made a pact with himself. If anybody at the bus would come out and reach out to him and say, son, are you okay? Are you feeling alright? He would have opened up and would have shared his life story and would have reached out for help. But as it so happened, nobody paid attention to him. As he arrived at his final destination at the Golden Gate Bridge, he walked around to and fro at the pedestrian area of the bridge, watched commuters go by soaking up the sights and he thought to himself, what is wrong with me? He was stalling for 30 minutes looking for reasons not to jump. He was looking for reasons to survive. But nobody simply came up to him. And when he did finally feel a tap on his shoulder, to his absolute disgust, it was a group of tourists who handed him a camera <laughs> and asked him to take their picture against him. That was the point of no return. Kevin decided, there is simply nothing for me to leave this world. A switch just flicked in his head, he jumped the guardrail and he plummeted towards his eventual death. More than 300 million people worldwide suffer from depression. There are 10 million cases per year in India alone. Yet, we understand so little about this disease. Yes, I use the word disease. A healthy mind is just as important as a healthy body. And what's even more shameful to me is that there is so much stigma involved with somebody suffering from depression. How do you explain to someone what you're going through? Something that is not real and something that is in your head. People will simply not understand. And for that reason alone, a person who's actually suffering chooses to do so in silence. All I wish for is to make a support structure where we don't have to do a lot all we have to do is listen. We are constantly surrounded with people in our lives. And we sometimes discuss things which are meaningful and sometimes which are not. But how often do we really listen with an intent to understand? How often do we empathize with others, put a shoulder around them and ask, are you alright? And if not, I got you. Look around you in this room. Look around the people in this room. I see a room full of hopes and dreams and expectations. I see wonderful friendships. I see so much love. Why can we not spread this kind of feeling everywhere we go? Back to the
the story of Kevin, it was nothing short of a minor miracle that he actually survived this fall. Kevin today has become a motivational speaker and he's an advocate for mental health rights. And when he's asked to recall his story about that fateful day, he has only one objective, to describe the emotions that he went through as soon as he jumped. That was a big hit. It took Kevin four seconds to fall from the edge of the bridge and hit the water. But to him, that felt like an eternity. He kept thinking, I wish I had one more chance at life because all my problems are fixable. I wish I could sit down with my family and have one more dish of pancakes that I hate so much. The force of impact with the water broke his back and being fully clothed from head to toe made it almost impossible for him to swim. But something about Kevin was different that day. His will to live had never been higher. He scratched and he clawed and he was hanging on for dear life because he was not going to die that way. He was not going to die under those circumstances. He managed to float for long enough for the Coast Guard to finally survive and rescue Kevin now shares his story all throughout the world in a hope to reach out and say to people, you are not alone. Moral of the story is, we will all go through a phase in life where things will not seem to go our way. But we must understand, life is under no obligation to give us what we want or what we deserve. Life in itself is a gift. We should not look at somebody else's life and compare them to ours. It is ours. We have been given the gift. We have been given the gift of life. We need to maximize it. I would like to close this speech with a very pertinent quote from a man, from a great man, who once said, change the way you look at things and life will change the way it looks at you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.